Today we're going to walk through the steps on how to clone your Raspberry Pi SD card. Now this comes in handy for any number of reasons. You want to keep an exact copy of your SD card as a backup in case something goes wrong with your Raspberry Pi. Maybe you want to keep your current Raspberry Pi configuration and copy it over to a second one. Uh, let's say you have a magic mirror or some sort of device that now you want to have a second one in the house. Or maybe you want to either shrink or increase the size of the SD card that you are using for your Pi. The last point of being able to change the size of your SD card isn't any different than making a simple copy of your card you have today. We just need to make sure that the new card you will be using as the destination is at least big enough to hold the amount of data you currently have on your Pi. So for example, if you're currently using a 16 gig SD card, but now you want to move that card and use it in your digital camera, you could use this process to migrate to a larger or even a smaller card in your Pi, say an 8 gig card, as long as the amount of data that's being copied would actually fit on that 8 gig card. The only two things that we physically need and the one assumption for today for these steps are these. First, you need a second SD card that you want to copy the data to, not the one that's currently running your Pi. Secondly, you will need a USB SD card adapter. There are a few different styles available in the market and the exact style doesn't matter as long as it lets you take your destination SD card and effectively turn it into a USB drive. The last thing that we assume today is that your Pi is currently running with the GUI desktop. It's not just a command line only like a headless server or one of the light versions of the Raspberry OS. If you are wanting to shrink the size of the card that you are using, we can do a quick check within the Pi desktop to see how much space we need on the new card. Since we're using the GUI desktop, this is actually pretty easy. We'll be able to open up File Manager on the Pi and in the window that opens down in the bottom right, you're going to see a total size and a free space size. The total size listed is probably slightly smaller than the actual card you have. In this case, it's showing 13.7 gigs, but we know we have a 16 gig card. There's always gonna be space on the card that can't be used by the operating system that we call overhead. The free space that's left, we can subtract that from the total, and we wanna subtract it from the total that we know the card is, to get how much data is currently being used. With our calculations in the example today, we know that we would need at least 10 and a half gigs in size to fit what we currently have. So this example is not a good candidate for being able to shrink to a smaller card. Once you've verified the size of the card that you need, insert your new second SD card into your USB adapter, but do not yet plug it into your Pi. It's also a good idea to go ahead and make sure that you don't have any other storage devices like a USB card currently attached to your Pi. The only thing that you want connected to it is the SD card that is actually running your Pi. So now we go to our main Raspberry Pi menu. We'll come down to Accessories and then over to SD Card Copier. In the screen that opens up here, you want to make note of the Copy From Device option that's in the drop-down. We're going to need this again in a second. So select your device that's here. Now is when we want to go ahead and plug in that USB SD card adapter you had. Your screen will refresh. You'll need to select your copy from device one more time, so make sure you select the same option that was there before. And this time in the copy to device, you're going to select your USB adapter that you plugged in. It will most likely show up as a mass storage device or a USB device of some sort. Most users will want to leave the check mark for new partition UUIDs as unselected. This will make sure that you are getting an exact copy of your Raspberry Pi OS as it is today. When you're ready, go ahead and click start and it is going to ask you to confirm that you're aware that you're going to lose any data on that second SD card. So again, make sure you have everything off of it that you might need. Once this process starts to run, it'll give you the progress bar along the way, and we did speed this up today. On our device that we're doing for this video, which is a 16 gig card and it's using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus device, it took about eight minutes to clone the entire card. Once completed, You'll have a nice message on the screen and you're done. From here, you could do some testing by shutting down your Pi, swapping cards, and booting back up on the new clone card. If you really want, you could create some text files, 
one on one card and then on the other card use one that's a little bit different and as you trade the cards back and forth you'll notice that your files are still there either way you'll notice that on your new destination card everything got left exactly like it was when we started this today so cloning your Pi SD card to a second physical card may not be a fit for every situation, but it is pretty quick and easy way to make a solid backup or even duplicate your Pi.